now on Fixing the Money Thing. Steve and Karen came to my, my door one day. They were members of our church. And they, they, were, they were concerned. They had a big family. They wanted to buy a house. They wanted to land. They wanted to build a house. They had no money saved. And then tears, Pastor, we just don't know how we can ever do this. We want a house so bad, but we just can't. There's just, just no way. We just don't see that happening right now. So I encouraged them in the kingdom. I said, listen, the kingdom's your answer. Think outside the box. Let the Holy Spirit give you direct, directions, you know, creative ideas. They found some land that was for sale for $55,000. And uh, they said, we, we can't buy it. We love it. We can't buy it. I said, how do you know you can't buy it? I said, have you had it appraised? Well, no, we haven't had it appraised. I said, there's a bank down the street. Uh, why don't you check with them? I knew that was ba- how this bank functioned. Well, basically, they had it appraised, and it appraised for $130,000. And the bank says, well, you don't need a down payment. It's worth $130,000. We'll easily give you a loan for $55,000. said, wow, they own their land now with no money exchanged. I said, whoa, okay. So then what happens with them is they have their car hits a deer total. Their van engine blows up all within two weeks. They have about five kids. And so they, the insurance company provides two weeks free rental for the one that was in the accident. And they come down to the end of the two weeks. And they, they so they believe God. They saw what happened with the land. They see how this thing is working. They believe God. And so they get a call. The night before he's supposed to take the rental car back to the rental agency, a guy calls and asks this question. He knows nothing about these cars. Steve, I have a car I'd like to give away. Could you ask someone at your church if, you, if they know of anyone that would like it? Steve says, well, I, I need a car. So on the way to drop the rental car off, he picks up that car. But now they need a van because now they're coming to church in two or three trips, cramming their kids in there. And so they said, you know, we decided, they came to me at the front of the church one day and says, you know what, we believe we're going to receive and we have received, we're gonna, we need a Honda Odyssey. We're believing God for a Honda Odyssey. Would you agree with this pastor? I said, sure. So we agreed. I know we went over to their house one day. A couple weeks went by, nothing changed. But on their refrigerator was a big picture of a Honda Odyssey. And she said, every time I went to that refrigerator, I laid my hand on that picture and said, thank you, God, for our Honda Odyssey. I thank you that we have our Honda Odyssey. A week later, my secretary calls. Pastor, strange call came in this morning. I said, what do you mean? Well, this family wants to donate a van to the church. I said, what kind of van? Well, it's a Honda Odyssey. I said, is it in good shape? Because... You know, Christians usually give hand-me-downs, you know, junk away to church people. I say, is it, is it, is it in good shape? So it's, it's in perfect. We saw it's mint. It's perfect. It's 70,000 miles. There's not one scratch on the entire vehicle. It's absolutely perfect. I said, I know where that van goes. We called Karen on the phone, and we said, we kind of played, played with her a little bit. Karen, how's it going? Here's what she said on the phone. I'm one day closer, she says, to having my van. <laughs> I said, well, your day's here. Come and pick it up. (laughs) And she came and picked it up. The kingdom works different. It works different. You have to change how you think. How is the Sabbath rest possible? It's only possible if you have more than enough. A lot of Christians are happy their bills are paid. So the problem with just having your bills paid is tomorrow it comes. Okay, so how can you have a Sabbath rest? Because if you, don't have a, if you don't have provision, you've got to work on that next day to provide for that day. So it's called the double portion. The double portion is more than enough. In Exodus chapter 16, we find this statement about the, the manna that they were picking up off the ground, the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 16 and verse number 23. Let's go to, um, yeah, 20, 20, 21. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as he needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much. Okay, you see that? They gathered twice as much on the sixth day. Why? Because the next day was a rest day, Sabbath day. And so the Lord commanded them to do this. And uh, so they saved it on the sixth day to the next day. 
And nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind, he said, I have given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day, he gives you twice the double portion. So Hebrews chapter 4 says there is a Sabbath rest for God's people, which infers that God is going to bless you with more than enough so you can rest. Except in our situation, it's not one day of the week, it's a kingdom. So it's not just the sixth day of the week, we live in the seventh day. In the kingdom of God, we live in the seventh day through Jesus Christ. The church has not been taught how to step into the double portion, how to step into the multiplied overflow. There can be no Sabbath rest without more than enough. The double portion is required. You know, it's interesting how the kingdom operates. It's just it's so cool. You know, in Isaiah 61, speaking of Israel's future, in verse number 7, I'm going to close up this session with this scripture here. It says this regarding Israel. And, of course, Jesus said Isaiah 61 was referring to the church when he went into the temple in Luke chapter 4. But it says this, instead of their shame, my people will receive a what? Double portion. And instead of disgrace, they'll rejoice in their inheritance. And so they'll inherit a double portion in their land. And everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them, remember Joseph, all in this, the everlasting covenant's you. All that see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. One quick story for lunch here, real quick. This past year, Drend and I were uh, driving some guests around. And we're not, I'm not a car person. I, cars don't do much for me. I don't, cars, I like bicycles. I mean, I, I do like to ride bikes and different things, and motorcycles, but cars, eh, you know, cars, they're okay. But um, we rented this Escalade to uh, drive someone one day, and, you know, it's kind of nice. It was, it was kind of nice. I thought, it's just, I've never been in Escalade before. It's kind of nice. And uh, we drove it around, and it was, it, it was nice. And Drennan says, you know, I'd like one of these. I said, yeah, I think, I think it'd be good. I think, I think we should, I like the short one. I like the color, too, we have right here. I, like, I think we need one just like this. I like this. Didn't think anything about it. Of course, I've given cars away. Uh, I think it's eight or nine, ten cars away. I don't know how many cars I've given away. And uh, so I didn't think anything about it. And it wasn't uh, maybe a month later, a guy calls me on the phone. I remember I was going out to get the paper, had my cell phone, it rang, and I picked it up. Hello? He goes, uh, excuse me, uh, Pastor Gary, um, I'd like to buy you an Escalade. Really? Really? What color do you want? Well, we, we kind of like that, that uh, white one we drove this summer. I said, okay, I'll get it. Awesome. That's a good morning, right? It's like, no, no, no problem. But the question is, the question is, why was it the Escalade? Okay, it gets interesting even past that. So this guy finds one. He calls us up. I've got your Escalade. He goes, man, I'm really sorry. I said, sorry for what? Well, I tried to find, he was trying to buy one, you know, year old, get the best value one year old. I, I, I was trying to find the long one. I knew that's what you wanted. I said, no, it wasn't. We wanted the short one. He says, all I could find was the short one. And here it is. <laughs> See, it's interesting how the kingdom works when we said, We'd like to, I think we'd like that. We'd like to have that. And we've sown eight or nine cars just right, right to harvest. It's interesting. I mean, I'm just watching how it works. 